I think I finally figured out how this thing works and it's kind of crazy. So by now you're probably getting sick of videos about this hub, but I promise that this one's going to be a little bit different and kind of give a little more insight into the technology and how this thing actually works. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is completely taking everything out of the internals and taking even the entire axle out of this hub and put it back together but without the hub shell. I'm sorry, Tal, for making this video, but I know that a lot of people are going to get a lot of information out of this, and I hope that it makes people that much more interested in the Free Night Planetary Free Coaster. So let's get into it. Before we actually take the axle apart and show this hub working without the hub shell on it, Let's take a look at the axle itself because I'm sure that you guys have seen at least one of my previous videos about this hub praising it for how amazing that it is. Well, there's one thing that I would give criticism on for this hub and it's mainly something that a lot of people won't worry about and that is the hollow 14 millimeter axle and it's the fact that it's hollow because for someone like me who's very back peg oriented it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when this thing is going to bend and break if you take a closer look here when i spin this axle you'll see that it's actually already slightly bent after just one month of riding but luckily the guys at free night were nice enough to send out a spare axle before this happened so I have an axle and I'm going to be putting it in and I'm going to do a subsequent video where I'm going to use this and do an axle mod with it. So check that video out in one of the corners. If you haven't, let's get this axle out of here and show you guys what the hub assembly looks like without the hub shell. Hammer it. One time, I have not done this before. It just popped out perfectly. So as we can see here, everything's out. Came out very nicely. We can set this aside and I'm going to take off the non-drive side cone spacer so that I can go ahead and grab a bearing and put it onto the drive side just so I don't have to beat this bearing out of the hub as well. So let's set aside our drive side cone spacer pull off our bearing and now that I've got the bearing off of this side I'm just going to take it and slide it right onto drive side next up we're going to grab our clutch assembly because this is what goes against the bearing from here we'll grab our spacer this is what goes inside our clutch assembly next up we grab our driver slide the driver on and now we'll grab our jam nut we'll tighten it against there and this will be a complete setup without the hub shell okay now we've got the jam nut on here everything is assembled and this is the part where i honestly have no idea what's going on so i just have to play with it and see what i see so upon first taking this thing apart, it's very apparent that I had absolutely no idea what was going on in here, and that it would just take a certain amount of tinkering and kind of messing with things to figure out how the internals of this hub work. And upon first taking it apart, I kind of noticed that moving the driver forward and backward just allowed things to freely spin. So the first thing I wanna do is take a look at what happens when you're pedaling this thing forward. And in order to do that, what we need to do is hold the axle in place and hold the clutch disc so that we can control its motion and move the clutch disc forward at the exact same rate we move the driver forward. And as you can see, this triangle piece here is engaging the paws and allowing them to go up. And when it goes off of it, they go back down. So when we're moving both of them forward, it's hitting those and engaging the paws. And I'm assuming that this is how the hub pedals forward and it engages the ratcheting ring on the hub. So let's take a look at what happens when we back it off all the way against the other side of the triangle piece that I was talking about and do the exact same thing. So that's where kind of the little tiniest bit of slack that you feel comes from. It's when it's all the way back on that other triangle piece and you go to pedal forward, it has to get rid of that. 
And that's something that you only really feel whenever this hub is not moving and when you're just sitting on the ground messing with it that way because when it's coasting forward, as you'll see here in a second, that is not an issue. So let's talk about coasting now. In order to replicate coasting, what we need to do is hold the axle in place, hold the clutch disc in place, hold the driver in place. And the only thing that we want to change here is the clutch disc because when we're coasting, obviously our axle never moves. And when we're coasting, our driver is not moving because we're not pedaling forward or backwards. The only thing that's moving is the hub shell as the wheel moves forward. And when the hub shell moves, this clutch disc moves because it's held in place by the hub shell. So let's hold this hub shell, let's hold the driver, and let's hold the clutch disc instead of the hub shell. And we're just going to move it forward. And as you can see, when it's moving forward like this, as long as it's moving forward, it's engaging the paws. As it's moving forward, it engages the paws. But as soon as it's not, it's not engaging them anymore. As soon as it stops moving forward, that's when it stops engaging these paws. So I'm not totally sure what any of that means yet, but it kind of makes sense and you can kind of gather how it's making the cassette noises while it's moving forward. <clears throat> we gotta keep moving forward to do this. So the next thing that we wanna take a look at after showing the pedaling and the coasting is obviously the huge one. What happens when this thing is faking? Let's completely reenact an abubica to fakie from pedaling to it to the fakie. So first thing we need to do, obviously, as we've said, axle doesn't move. We're holding the clutch disc as the hub shell would, and we're holding the driver as if we have our feet on the pedals. We're pedaling at our abubica just like we would. The hub shell moves forward, the driver moves forward. We get close to the quarter pipe. Now we're just coasting. Driver doesn't move, hub shell moves. Keeps the paws engaged. So we get to the abubica. Everything stops. It's still engaged here. Let's move it forward just a little bit more so you can see it better. Now, we land in our fakie. Driver doesn't move. Hub shell is the only thing that moves. Backwards. Instantly, those paws flip down. And that's how we're free coasting. We go from engaged to disengaged instantly without having to do anything. And I think that that's kind of how this hub works. I still don't totally understand it, but I think this gives a little bit better of an idea of what's going on in here. So we go from, we go from being engaged to disengaged. And as we're faking, the clutch disc is going this way. We're not pedaling backwards. And you can see that this piece here, the piece that engages the paws, goes all the way against the other side. Now, we are turning our fakie around. That means that we're not pedaling, we're not doing anything, we're doing a half cab and instantly going to coast again. So we turn our half cab around, boom, hub shell moves forward, instantly goes back into cassette mode where we're clicking, the paws are engaged with the teeth on the ratcheting ring. This is some seriously amazing and crazy stuff that's going on with this hub. I think that showing this technology and showing how it works will get that many more people excited about it because it is truly amazing stuff that's going on here. And it, if it hasn't yet, it will completely change the free coaster game. So with this, if you're seeing this video somewhere else, hit the subscribe button down below and check out the playlist somewhere in this area showing other videos about this truly amazing and revolutionary hub. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for another video and I thank you for watching. Goodbye.